Hi, I'm David the Bruce. This is Jungle Queen, and today we have our distinct pleasure in watching The Island of Lost Women from 1959 and distributed by no less than Warner Brothers. It was an independent film, but it was distributed by Warner Brothers. And this is really an interesting um, film. A Jungle Queen, in my view, is a woman who lives in another culture other than our own, um, who has a leadership position. Now, this film has three women on an island, and they live there with their dad. He's a scientist. Anyway, um, <clears throat> they conspire with uh, two guys to get off of the island. And so within that conspiracy is kind of a, a leadership struggle. So uh, that's where they are women leaders in a foreign culture. <laughs> this film is um, it's a definite B film, I, I must say. It is a definite B film. It's an independent film. And uh, so, you know, to keep the budget down, you film it in kind of an islandish kind of setting, so you don't have to get property rights and all this and buildings and a lot of equipment. You just need the good old outdoors, a plane, and just a handful of actors. That's it. So, okay, so here's the plot of the story. Plot is, is that this plane is um, going over the South Pacific waters and suddenly one of the engines kind of conks out and they're forced to do this landing in an un unchartered island, you know, uninhabited. And when they land, they discover uh, that it is inhabited. They meet the scientist there and he quickly wants them to get out of there, man. He doesn't want, he, he does not want his girls to be getting together with men, no way. Now he has abandoned uh, civilization uh, when his daughters were very little and had come to the island and uh, he believes and in 1959 this was not a hard idea to to believe especially in the Cold War era that the the world was uh, going to destroy itself you know go to hell in a handbag as it were um, he was really concerned about nuclear energy so on the island he is to live a better life for with and for his girls. And so suddenly these two outsiders show up. Oh my gosh. Well, now of course you know the approximate ages of the daughters, don't you? <laughs> Why they fit very compatibly with the two hunks that just kind of landed on the island. And uh, so uh, the, the dad, to say the least, really wants them out of there and mm, reluctantly helps them get their plane going. but. And when he realizes that the two older ones are going to leave with them, oh, all bets are off. So that plane has to be destroyed. Uh, I guess there's more that we could say, but I'm not going to. I think I've talked enough. We need to get on with this movie. It's called, again, The Island of the Lost Women from 1959. I'm David the Bruce. Here we go.
Where do you think we are, Joe? In trouble. We're lost. The typhoon last night really blew us off course. Number one. Well, that other one's okay, isn't it? Yes, so far. But did Grit Swim had it? You in shape to swim to Australia? Swim. Why do it the hard way? We'll use the rubber boat. Look, over there. That's an island. Let's check it out. between us and the ocean. Well, there goes the radio. Looks like a beach down there. Port engine's heating up. Yeah, we'll have to land. Any sign of life? Uh, nothing I can see. Do not land here. It will lead your certain destruction. That was something. And it's alive. Well, whatever it is, it doesn't sound too friendly. Certain destruction. Is he kidding? One engine gone. Radio out. Hang on, buddy. Here we go. Okay, skipper. Keep away. You must not land here. Atmospheric disturbance. We'll have to go through it. There's going to be a short landing. Unfeather that right engine and start it. And start. Now uh, let it windmill. I told you there was nothing to be nervous about. Oh, I wasn't nervous. Paralyzed. You know, you're pretty good. Pretty good, he says. I'm terrific. <laughs> Man, that was really close. Yeah, too close. Now let's find out who belongs to that voice we heard. Here comes the welcoming committee. I warned you not to land here. One motor was gone and we were having trouble with the other. We had to land here or in the ocean. What you yelled at us would have kept us flying if we could. How'd you do that? I'm not without resources. Can your plane be repaired? Depends on what's the matter with it. You have emergency fuel? Yes, plenty. Well, how long will it take you to fix it? I won't know until I've checked into the trouble. But believe me, it's not going to be easy to bounce off this beach. We're sorry to have intruded on you. My name's Mark Bradley. The radio commentator. Why, uh, yes. You've heard my broadcast back in the States? No, here. Here? By shortwave. 
You're on your way to the International News Conference at Melbourne, aren't you? That's right. I'm afraid this is going to make me a little late for the opening ceremonies. I still don't know who you are. You may call me Mr. Paul. Very well, sir. You here on a vacation? I live here. Really? We saw the island from the air, but it didn't seem to be civilized, and you're too far from civilization to be a traitor. I came here to get away from civilization, Mr. Bradley. I was successful until a few moments ago. Oh, oh. Urena! <laughs> Welcome. They come in threes. Yeah, man. I told you girls to stay in the shelter. Oh, we just wanted to see them, Father. They're beautiful. Mm, you've got that backwards. What's your name? I'm Mark Bradley, and this is Joe Walker, my pilot. Well, let's start this from right to left, huh? You first. I'm Mercuria. This is Venus. And Urana. Our father named us after the planet. Uranus the baby. I'm not a baby, I'm 16. <laughs> You're much prettier than the men we've seen in books. You're the first live young men we've ever seen. We almost weren't. Well, alive, that is. Will you please check the damage to your plane? Oh, sure. Go ahead, Joe. May we go watch, Father? Hmm? Oh, yes, I suppose so. It certainly looks complicated. Looks like we got a busted fuel pump and clogged gas lines. That's rough. It's gonna mean a delay. You mean you think I'd like to stall around here? All right, I'll put it another way. I'm happy to report we've got a busted fuel pump. What about the spare? Well, it's still a two-day job. I tear down the whole bank to get at it. With a, with a little effort, I could stretch it into three days. You mean you'll be with us three whole days? I can't offer you lodging, gentlemen, but uh, at this time of year, the weather's quite pleasant here. I think you'll find the beach quite comfortable for the two days you stay here. Of course. They'll eat with us in the shelter, won't they, Father? Yes. Yes, of course. Design these swimsuits yourselves? Yes. Tunics out of one of Father's books. But they're not swimsuits. It's so warm here, we dress like this all year round. Here's where we live. In a cave? Where do you see it? Must be an electronic eye. Yeah. Say, your old man's pretty sharp. Come in, gentlemen. Come in. Well, what do you know? Books? Furniture? If there's another place like this on the island, I'll take it. That's amazing. Now, lighting. Where do you get your power? I have a solar furnace. It was quite a project. Look over here. Through these panels, we collect the rays of the sun to operate the power plant. You've certainly done wonders. There must be an interesting story behind all this. There is. Do you mind if I take a look around? Go ahead. And then this is another one I like, the rise and fall of the Roman Empire. And there's little women and Jurgen. I don't understand everything, but I like them. I'd like to show you something we're very proud of. Father built it himself. This must be the short wave set your father mentioned. It's our only contact with the outside world. That's my pet program. We hear you on that station every week, Mr. Bradley. Hey, wait a minute. We can use that transmitter to tell the network what happened. They must be... We have no transmitter. There's no way of getting a message away from this island, Mr. Bradley. You'll have left long before your network becomes too upset. If we don't arrive in Melbourne tonight, they're going to be real upset. They'll have a search party underway within a matter of hours. That's what I'm trying to avoid. Mercuria. 
Why don't you and Venus uh, get started on some food for our guests? Yes, Father. Don't you have to help your sisters? I have to gather the eggs. You want to come with me? Sure. That's the way I like my eggs. Gathered. It's done. We can so comfortable. Thank you. I suppose you do deserve some sort of explanation. You'd like to know why I'm here, alone with my daughters? Yes, yes I would. Well, it started with the dropping of the atom bomb on Hiroshima 15 years ago. I was one of the many scientists associated with the development of atomic energy. I was led to believe that the bomb itself would be used only as a threat. So you ran away? No, sir. I made my choice. I had a young wife and three small children. We converted everything we owned to cash and sailed for Honolulu. There I accumulated what I would need here, everything. I bought an old inter-island trading schooner. Escapism. That's just a word, Mr. Bradley. I was concerned with reality. I did what I thought was right. Whatever you call it, half the people in the world wish they could do the same thing. Sure. Just a chance to live at peace with your children. You did all this by yourself? No. No, I hired two native seamen to man the schooner. They stayed here for three months and helped me build this shelter. And we're the first men you've seen in 15 years. Yes. Frankly, you can't wait till we leave. I wish you'd never come. Have you found everything you expected here? Didn't your wife miss the world? My wife? Oh, no. Before she died, our life here was perfect. We had each other, our books, our hobbies, and the children. Then we kept in touch. We heard what was going on in the outside through our radio. I'd like to ask you one more question. Well, what is it? I can't help but be curious about your daughter's future. How they're going to lead normal lives with our families of their own. Do you think I haven't worried about that a great deal? I keep telling myself that it's better for them to remain unmarried than to go back to what I still believe is certain death. Wasn't that a bit cowardly? Not to go back and fight for what you really believe in? That fight was lost at Hiroshima. Some of your best wine, Father, for such a special occasion. Where's Mr. Walker? Gathering eggs with Urena. Venus will be here with the food any minute now. I'm in charge of the chickens, and I take care of the garden, too. Mercuria is in charge of us girls. She weaves our clothes out of goat's wool and a loom that Father built. Venus is the cook. I'll get the eggs. No, let me get them. Uh, they're over there. Just lift up that board. Dr. Paul Lujan, California Institute. Are you glad I asked Father if I could take a walk with you? Sure, I'm glad. I'm just a little surprised he let you go. You mean because you're a man and I'm a woman? Well, that's part of it. Men and women should be together. It's a natural thing, isn't it? Why should Father object? Well, I have the impression he's a little bit strict with you. About those questions you wanted to ask me. Oh. Let me see. Suppose you tell me about your life. Is it exciting? Yes, yes, I think so. I, I get to travel, I meet interesting people. You've been just about everywhere, haven't you? What kind of things do you like best? Oh, good plays, opera, football, baseball. I've heard baseball games on our radio. They don't sound very exciting. I think I'd be more interested in the shops, plays. Oh, and men, of course. The thing I think I'm most interested in is men. Do you dream much? Uh, the average amount, I guess. Why? Well, almost every night I dream I'm just floating along. It's the most wonderful feeling. Well, that's uh, quite a common dream. Is there a copy of Freud in your father's library? If there is, I haven't read it. Freud, you said? Yes, well, you see, he has some interesting theories about what dreams really mean. Well, I'll ask Father if he has the book. You do that. Perhaps tomorrow you and I could lie on the beach and you could read to me what Freud says about dreams. Would you like that? Sure, but... You know, I'm beginning to think you're afraid of me. Should I be? Of course not. You're very tall. I like that. I like being with you. Bye. 
Father says for you to come back now. It's time for bed. I suppose that was your idea. That's right. Come on, lead the way, little sister. I will with you. Did you kiss her? What? Did you kiss her? No, I didn't. Mm, she must be terribly disappointed. Will you please be quiet? Well, she hoped you would. I did not. You did. Oh, now wait a minute. Now, what on earth makes you think a thing like that? I'm a woman. You're not. You're nothing but a spoiled child. I'm a woman, and women know about other women. I'll tell you something. You better kiss her tomorrow, or she'll never forgive you. You know, you are a spoiled child. You don't believe me. Just look at her. <laughs> Father, will you please do something about your outrageous child? Why? What did you do? She said the most embarrassing things about me in front of Mr. Bradley. Embarrassing and un untruthful. Well, Urena, what did you say? I don't care to discuss it, except that every word I said was absolutely true, and she knows it. Good night, everyone. Pleasure bidding, Mr. Bradley. Hey, come along, girls. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. I bet he's moving the furniture against that door. I don't think he trusts us. I wish we had a door with a lock on it. I don't trust those young ladies. One touch of Venus, huh? Five years. Hmm? That's how long we've been together. Everywhere. It works. Yeah, and this tops them all. An island that's not on the map, complete with three gorgeous gals. Crazy, but nice. You're missing the story. All you can see are the girls. Who did the vanishing act with Venus tonight? Never mind that. No, the old man's a real story. You know who he is? No. No, not yet. I do. How? Or Curia tell you? Nope. You're not the only one with a nose for news. I saw his name stenciled on a board in the chicken coop. It's pulled out of old packing crates. Well, who is he? Dr. Paul Lujan, home base, California Institute. Lujan. Yeah, that figures. Yeah? Tell me. He's one of the scientists who helped discover atomic power, worked with Dr. Einstein. No kidding. He's one of the leading authorities on nuclear fission in the world. Hey, he's not gonna like you broadcasting where he is. That's the point. I want to get the story on the wires. I want to fly out of here by tomorrow night. I'll try. That's not good enough. You got to do it. <laughs> Okay, let's get the old eight hours. I'm really beat. While you're working on that fuel pump, I want to get some pictures of Lujan and the girls. Now, wait a minute. I'm the cameraman, and I want to be there when you break the news to Lujan. Okay, come on, snap it up. And that pump's going to take more than one day to fix, I'm telling you. Come on, hurry up if you're going with me. All right, I'm hurrying. Hold it right there. Just a minute, Joe. Say cheese. Well, saying cheese makes you smile. Cheese. Swell, got it. Oh, take one of me alone. I haven't had a picture taken since I was a baby. <laughs> okay. Good morning. Good morning. What are you doing? Taking pictures. Stand next to Urena, please. And say cheese. It makes you smile. Cheese. There. They've been taking our pictures, Father. We want you in the next shot, Dr. Lujan. Run along, girls. I want to talk with these gentlemen alone. All right, Father. So you know who I am, Mr. Bradley. It's a great pity. My good luck. You know, you were the object of one of the greatest man hunts of all time. Now that you've found me, what do you intend to do? Well, I'm a newspaper man. Your news, Doctor. World news. I gave up your world. I told you why. I don't go along with your thinking, Doctor. I'll make you a proposition. If you'll give me your word not to divulge what you've seen on this island, I'll permit you to leave. Look, we gave our position before our radio went out. If we don't get the Melbourne, they'll have a search party out that'll put your utopia right on the map. If that's your answer, they won't find you. How do you think they're going to miss seeing our plane on the beach? It won't be there. What does he mean, it won't 
be there. I don't know. I'd better get that plane fixed before the roof caves in. Yeah, it's obvious he won't listen to reason. Now we've got to get out of here. Prado, I'll get to work on that fuel pump. That may not be necessary. I hoped and prayed that no one would ever disturb our isolation here. But if they did, I knew I had to be ready for them. That looks like a Luger. It was a Luger, until I put this on it. Well, what is it now? Condensed flamethrower. You certainly don't intend to use it. That depends entirely on you. You have only to give me your word. Your front page news, Doctor. What I told you still goes. Very well. Be proud of yourself, Doctor. For a man who hates violence. I warned you, I told you what would happen, but you wouldn't listen. So? So now what happens? I'm not sure. I I need time to think. And what do we do while you're thinking? Whatever you like. What happened? Your father destroyed our plane. But why? To stop me from telling the world where he is. You know how he feels about that. Yes, but now you can't leave. That's right. Joe and I have families and friends. They probably think we're dead. That's why we've got to leave. And the only way I know how is to build a raft. But we need tools. Can you get them for us? Father wouldn't let us. He has no right to keep us here. You must realize that. You've got to help us. I'm sorry, Mr. Bradley. Looks like we struck out, buddy. Shall we swim? Father, we want to talk to you. Yes, dear? What are you going to do? I mean, it doesn't seem fair to no. keep them here no. if they don't want to stay. We'll see. I haven't decided yet. Is it all right if we talk to them? Yes, if you want to. But don't you want to talk to them? I mean, after all these years, you've never had anyone to discuss things with. Mr. Bradley's awfully intelligent, don't you think so, Father? Yes, I, I'd like to talk to him, but I'm afraid it's not possible. Well, you've always said nothing is impossible. If you could just be friends and then leave it up to them. Please, Father. You could at least try. Let's see. Why don't we just clobber that son of a burn genius and take over? No, that's no good. We need the girls on our side. We start rousing the old man around, they'll never help us. Gentlemen, my, uh, my daughters have suggested that I offer you a truce of sorts. No deal, Doctor. We're getting off this island. Oh? In the meantime, if you'd care to, you're welcome to come to dinner. Thanks. Any time. I wouldn't trust him as far as I could kick an anvil. I wouldn't either. But he's got one good weapon. I don't mean that flamethrower. What's that? That dinner he offered us. Yeah, man. Hey, they're here! They're here! Come on in! Your father asked us to dinner. We're so glad you accepted. Well, now, let's not stand on ceremony. Where's the food? I'm delighted you came. I'm delighted you asked us. While the girls are getting dinner ready, perhaps you'd be interested in seeing my laboratory. Yes, I certainly would. Well, you go ahead, Mark. Hey, I'm a fool of peeling potatoes. Can you use me in the kitchen? We'll find something for you to do. Can you cook? Can I cook? Well, you've never tasted anything till you've sampled my barbecued buffalo into a glass. <laughs> <laughs> well, come along then. I'll get the vegetables. Your pilot's quite a character. Yes, he is. One of the best. Also a good friend. Yeah. 
Your cigarette, Mr. Bradley. Oh, I'm sorry. You're surprised, eh? That's putting it mildly. This is my world. I brought it with me when I left yours. What's the ultimate purpose of these experiments, Doctor? I spent 20 years trying to enrich natural uranium into the isotope U-235. Do you know that it took all the resources of the United States to build the equipment to carry this on? Well, I felt there must be a simpler way, and now I think I've found it. Now, here's the way I enrich the uranium. I have a stage reactor there in which I can melt it down into slug form with the heat from my solar furnace. This is the natural uranium. First, I, uh, I insert it into this special container, and I push this into the reactor. Do you have to operate this from a distance? Oh, yes, there's radiation all over. Now, Mr. Badley, if you look through that reactor periscope, you'll see how I load the charge into the first tube. Uh, can you see clearly? Yes, fine. Uh, that, uh, that well is about 38 feet deep. This rod forces up another rod vertically, as you see. There now, the first canister is loading. With that small electromagnet coming up towards us, I'll transfer the isotope which is being processed into this second canister. Now we're ready to lower the first canister. After it's been enriched, say, 20%, I transfer it to the next tube and uh, continue the process. Well, isn't there any danger that something could go wrong? Yes, if I accidentally loaded two highly charged pieces into the same tube, well, then I'd have an uncontrolled chain reaction. After all, that was the atom bomb. I have to check this every 12 hours, because everything in that pile is constantly getting richer. You're on a sort of 12-hour shift. Yes, that's right. Look through that again. Now, you see that second canister? Yes. If for any reason it would have been lowered into the container beneath it, then the big blow up. Yes, except for that panel. That tells me if the reaction is too fast or too slow. What's in there? Oh, that's my storeroom where I keep chemicals for my research. Some of them are dangerous, so I keep it locked. Oh, radar. Yes, a powerful acquisition radar. It warns me if a ship or a plane comes within 200 miles of my island. It's my burglar alarm. Well, what if a ship did approach? I destroyed. Why didn't you destroy us? I don't know. I think I do. It's because you were telling the truth when you said you hated violence. Yes, I do hate it. But if he has to, I guess every man will kill to protect what he loves. Excuse me. saying that if Joe and I tried to leave this island, you'd try to kill us? Yes, Mr. Bradley. I would. Well, you heard what your father said. Yes. Then we've got to get away from here. Help us? We'll have to build a raft. We'll need tools and a safe place to work. All right. We'll bring them tonight. There's a cove where you can work without Father knowing about it. We'll show you. You mustn't tell your Raina. There. I think that'll be enough. What's the matter? You all look as if you'd lost your best friend. Uh, we thought we'd lost you. Come on, we'll all help with the dinner. Hey, you're supposed to relax after dinner. And I still don't get it. What are we building this for? 
We've got to make Lujan think we've decided to stay. Here. Are these all right? These work out fine. Thanks. Father's gone to bed. How about Urena? She's asleep, too. Good. Where's that cove you mentioned? Come on, we'll show you. What do you think? Enough wood here? Could be. That raft will have to be plenty big, though. You can work here without being heard. Good. Father never comes to this side of the island. When you leave, take me with you. You're very sweet. But this is going to be rugged enough. Those waves are as big as a house out there, aren't they? I wouldn't be afraid. I wouldn't be in the way either. I can cook and I can swim like a fish. Tell you what, when we reach the mainland, I'll make arrangements to come back here for you, all of you. How's that? I don't want you to go, but I know you have to. Yes, we have to, but we will be back. Promise? I promise. Come on, Joe, let's get started. Oh, man, I'm bushed. That axe weighs more than I do. Well, it's four down, one and a half strip for use. It's not bad. How do you feel, muscles? Uh, numb. I'm asleep. Remind me to close my eyes. Lujan may check up on us, so we're sleeping where we did last. I was awake when they came back. They just stopped by to ask us if we needed anything. Really? Well, they're both asleep now, so no one knows I'm out. Aren't you glad to see me? Oh, of course I am. But growing girls need their sleep. Tell you what I'll do. I'll walk you back to the shelter, okay? I'm not a growing girl. I'm grown. <laughs> well, you'd know it, too, if you ever took your eyes off Venus. <sighs> Come on. You be nice to me? It's a deal. All right. you alone because I have something to tell you about us. Us? Just because I've lived on this island all my life, please don't think I don't know anything. I've read all the books almost in Father's library. All the books about men and women and love. I'm not as innocent as you think I am. When I first saw you, it did something to me. I analyzed my feelings. The books are full of just the things that happened to me. They happen to every girl when she first falls in love. The thrill of being near you, with you. When I saw you, I felt it for the first time. It was wonderful. You, uh, learned all that out of a book? Don't make fun of me. This is serious. Really, it is. I felt a longing to touch you, to hold you. I still do. You think you're in love with me? I know I am. I have all the symptoms. Do you feel love towards me? <laughs> well, I'm very fond of you, Urena. But I'm also fond of Mercuria, Venus. Fond, huh? Venus. I've seen the way you look at her. You didn't talk to her like this tonight, did you? I've never mentioned love to Venus, and she's never mentioned it to me. We haven't known each other long enough. Love is, well, it's being with someone you, you just can't get along without. That's just the way I feel about you. It was love at first sight. That is out of a book, believe me. No, it isn't. It's out of my heart, and it won't ever change, never. Look, you go on inside and get some sleep, and I'll see you tomorrow morning. Good morning. You're up early. We always are. Come over here and lie down. Lie down? Come along. Lie down here on your stomach. Mm. <laughs> You're going to like this. I like it already. 
Only I thought your father was... Oh, father always has us do this after he's done any hard work. Like chopping down trees. Oh, man. I'm never gonna leave this island. Told you'd like it, Joseph. Joseph. That's funny. Why? That's your name, isn't it? Well, yes, but nobody ever called me Joseph except Mother. Well? Hey, don't stop. You must have been a handsome little boy. <laughs> Just goes to show what can happen. I don't know. Let's see. I don't think so much has happened. Oh, I tell you definitely. I'm not leaving. I wish... You wish what? I wish you didn't have to go. Go! No! Well, good morning. All the comforts are home. Best looking Miss Susan in the business. Are you sure we have to leave here? Yes, I'm sure, and so are you. Well, I'd better go. Father would worry about me. Uh, may I borrow that Mercuria? Of course. Thank you. Goodbye, Joseph. Goodbye, Mercuria. You know, the more I think about staying... Now, you listen to me, Joseph. Don't you get any ideas or you'll be seriously dead. You heard what Lujan said. Mm, I suppose, but... There's a pretty wonderful gal. I mean... I know, I know, I know what you mean. Forget it. Carry on, good boy. <laughs> right there. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. Would you and Mr. Walker care to join us for breakfast? One we? We'll be right there. Hey, you can't hear me. Come on, buddy. Just step over here, please. The plane. Searching for you, I'm sure. About 100 miles away, approaching at... Uh, 250 miles an hour. Father, I think Mercuria, you should... Mercuria, please. You both stay here. Help yourselves to breakfast. That isn't the real reason you got us up here. No, as a matter of fact, it isn't. That was a pretty low trick. Suppose that plane does land. I'll destroy it. There was not a sign of an oil slick or a dye marker in this ocean. this island will be marked as uninhabited. They'll never look for you again. And we'll be listed as dead. Come on, Joe. The show is over. We'd better get busy with... Yeah, I guess so. I'll be right with you, Mark. Never mind, I want to think this out. He didn't want you with him. Will you please mind your own business? Urena, go tidy up your room. Would you like to be alone, too? No, that's where we're different. When I'm all fouled up, I want someone to bounce my meanness off on. Want to volunteer? If you'd like me to. I sure would. Coming with us? No, thank you. Is there any 
anything I can do? No, there's nothing anyone can do. When that plane took off, it was good night all. Do you want me to leave? No, no. Would it help if I... No, I guess it wouldn't. Would what help? No, you're wrong. It did help. You know, you're pretty wonderful. You're unspoiled and you're trusting. I just want to help you, that's all. I can't bear to see you troubled and discouraged. I'd do anything. No, you just stay the way you are. That's all you have to do. Don't ever change. Everything changes. And everyone. That's one of the truest things that Father taught us. You see it here every day. Things grow up. They get old. They die. Oh, not really. New things are born to take their place. And the memory of what is good and beautiful never dies. But to have memories, there has to be something to remember. That's true. If we were together somewhere else back in the States, why, then... Then what? Perhaps then I could... But we're not somewhere else. We're here. And I've got a job to do. You still want to be alone, don't you? Well, I... All right. I'll go swimming for a while.
so. Two arms, two legs. That's what I went in with. I don't remember what happened out there. I just want to remember you close to me. Mark, I made up my mind I'm going with you. Listen to me. I can't take you with us. There are a million reasons why, but I, I just can't take you. Oh, I'm really going to miss you, Joseph. I'm going to miss you. What will you do when you get back home? Oh, the usual things. Then someday soon, I guess, I'll look for a wife, a house full of kids. I never thought about such things before. A husband, I mean. Father always taught us not to worry about the future. Your father's a smart man, but about that he's wrong. Women should have children. And a home. That's right, Joseph. Well, if only you could take me with you. But I can't. Mark and I can handle that raft. But if I had you to worry about, I... Would you worry? Would you really? You know something? I've seen a lot of girls all over the world. But I've never known one like you. Didn't anyone ever teach you to knock? Sorry, but the door was open. What happened? Venus pushed you in the drink? No, we had a little argument with a shark. You're okay, aren't you? Yeah, we, we were lucky. Venus is all right, too. She's back in the shelter. I'd better go to her. Okay, so I'm a heel, but I want to explain something. She kissed me, and I didn't fight it. <laughs> I've never met girls with such a fanatical urge for kissing. Well, you too? You know, uh, the way things are going around here biologically, we better get that raft finished soon. We're going to have to lice these logs tighter if we expect it to hold together. Yeah. Mr. Bradley. Mr. Bradley. You better stop all this nonsense. Uranus told me that you plan to leave the island and take Venus with you. That's not true. She probably heard Venus say she was going with us, but I told her I wouldn't take her in any circumstances. Indeed. And don't think I didn't guess you'd try something like this. I even toyed with the idea of letting you go. You'd have drowned before you'd been out a day. I still believe that you plan to take my daughter with you. You listen to me. We're going to finish that rap. We're going to leave on it. Just Joe and I. Mark is telling the truth, Father. He won't let me go with him. Go back to the shelter. Both of you. We're going to stay with them until they leave. You're coming with me. No, Father. Do you really have to tell people Father's here? Yes, I have to. Don't you understand that? All I understand is I don't want you to go. Now you can tie it off there. Well, let's get that rudder rigged and we can bring the gear aboard and secure it. We've been at this for five solid hours. You act like there's no tomorrow. Let's quit for a while, huh? But we're not tired. I'm not as healthy as you girls. How about? Okay. Let's finish in the morning. Come on before he changes his mind. How about some sleep? Why don't you and Mercuria stretch out over there, and when we can't stay awake any longer, we'll, we'll wake you and you can keep watch. The most thoughtful man I know. Come on, honey. Why 
Why are you smiling? I was just wondering what your father's thinking. Please go to bed, Father. You must get some rest. I will, I will. Look, you can't do anything as long as Venus and Mercuria stay there with them. Father, I did hear Venus say she was going, but I think Mark was telling the truth. He must have told her that he wouldn't take her after I left. See? But the men are desperate enough to try it on that raft anyhow. And it's just possible they might be picked up. And then the world will find out what I am. Is the world really as awful as you've said it is? Yes. It's like some horrible great snowball. Rolling faster and faster toward extinction. Go to bed, dear. All right. I won't sleep a wink until I know you've gone to bed. Why don't you wait till morning to figure things out? You'll think a lot better when you've had some rest. In a little while. Good night, Father. Good night, dear. back for you. It will be California. Here we come. I'll show you all the sights. The desert. We'll go to Florida, New Orleans. Oh, food like you've never tasted before. Go to San Francisco. Have you ever read about San Fran? Can I ask you what this is all about? Then pick up that microphone and speak to Mr. Bradley. Go on. Tell him that I'll release you as soon as my daughters are back here alone without him. Hey, Mark. Mark, wake up. I think I fouled things up. I'm in the laboratory at the shelter, staring at that ugly-looking flamethrower. Dr. Lujan says he'll let me go as soon as the girls show up here without you. Do whatever you think is best. That is all. That is not all. Let me make this very clear. Unless my daughters are back here alone in 20 minutes, you'll be responsible for what happens to Mr. Walker. I can't believe Father would really hurt Joe. What shall we do? I don't know. Joe's likely to make a grab for that flamethrower, then anything could happen. You both better go back. That's all we can do. Will you get rid of that pop gun? It makes me nervous. Go in there. Okay, open the door. Leave the key in the lock. Close the door from the inside.
stop here. It's not much further. All right, but hurry. Tell Joe I'll wait for him right here. What are you doing? Put that back. I was afraid you'd use it. Do what you're told. Please, Father. Let go of it. Let... This place is going to blow up. came in as soon as you called. When did this happen? Our monitors picked up an atomic explosion at 311. We checked through with Tokyo and San Francisco. They confirmed. The point of detonation triangulates out here, in the middle of hundreds of miles of uncharted water, not even an island that we know of. Hello? This is Dr. McBain, Royal Australian AEC. Give me headquarters, American Air Force. Emergency. Father? All right.
Ironic, isn't it? The very thing I came here to escape. You're not to blame for all of this, Doctor. My Garden of Eden, you called it, Mr. Bradley. Well, it's gone now. I'm sorry. I know how much of you was in it. The problem is, what do we do now? I think it's straight below, according to the position that they gave us. But it's not there. Smoke at one o'clock. Let's go down and give it a look. Do you hear something? What? A plane. A plane! There it is! Come on, you fly boys! Come on! I count six people, right? Check. Get on the radio. Alert Air Sea Rescue. Give our position to ask him to send us an air fan that's capable of carrying six passengers. Prado. He's going away. No, he's just circling for a lower altitude, that's all. He's got us bracketed. Stay close to me, understand? All flyers are strictly wolves. Wolves? That's right. Men will make love to girls. Kiss them. Oh, you mean men like you? Yeah, like me. So stay close. I will, Joseph. You're not sorry we're leaving, are you, Father? We'll see, my darling. We'll see. Here comes your world. Our world. From a pin-up girl to a studio head, here is the incredible story of Venetia Stevenson. She was born in London in 1938 to a show business family. Her gorgeous mother was the acclaimed actress Anna Lee, and her dad, Robert Stevenson, was a respected movie director. So, it could be said that she was destined for Hollywood. And sure enough, just before the outbreak of World War II, she and her family moved to Hollywood. Venetia grew into a visually stunning teenager and quickly moved into the modeling business. She soon appeared on the covers of several men's magazines. She could be seen everywhere. She had success in television as well. Warner Brothers set up several guest appearances on TV shows, including the role of Ricky Nelson's girlfriend on the popular series The Adventures of Ozzy and Harriet in 1958. Other work included roles on Cheyenne in 1957 and 77 Sunset Strip in 1958. Hollywood set her up with several big-name stars using her good looks for publicity. These obvious setups included such big stars as Tab Hunter, Anthony Perkins, and, believe it or not, Elvis Presley. It was all Hollywood propaganda. Venetia frequently publicly dated Tab Hunter as a beard to cover for his then-boyfriend. Although Tab Hunter's gay relationship was an open secret in Hollywood, Venetia acted as a confidant for Perkins. She later said, Certainly, we all knew Tony was gay, we were real friends, and he would sleep over at my house in the same bed. But there was never, ever any. Well, you know. If you have a friend of the opposite sex who's gay, it's just up in the air. In 1956 she married an up-and-coming actor named Russ Tamblin 
from the movie version of West Side Story. But, unfortunately, the marriage lasted only a year. She and Russ Tamblin were history, but Hollywood was now her future, and she was soon cast in several films. Her first film was Darby's Rangers in 1958, starring James Garner with Peter Brown and Ed Burns. You know, you're pretty wonderful. You're unspoiled and you're trusting. I just want to help you, that's all. I can't bear to see you troubled and discouraged. I'd do anything. Well, you just stay the way you are. That's all you have to do. Don't ever change. Everything changes. And everyone. That's one of the truest things that Father taught us. You see it here every day. Things grow up. They get old. They die. Oh, not really. New things are born to take their place. And the memory of what is good and beautiful never dies. But to have memories, there has to be something to remember. That's true. Generally, Venetia was cast as the beautiful distraction in action-adventure and crime movies. She had a great ride in Hollywood during the 1950s. But as the 50s came to a close, she felt that her acting was not sufficient to continue. So, moving on, she married one of the legendary Everly brothers, Don Everly, of Wake Up Little Susie fame, in 1962. They had two daughters and a son. All three dabbled in show business and the music industry with some success. Sadly, they divorced in 1970. Venetia never remarried. Always moving forward, Venetia became a script reader for Burt Reynolds' production company. And she became vice president of Cinema Group Ventures. This production company released Star Trek III, The Search for Spock and Trading Places and several other movies. She is fully retired and enjoys a simple life enjoying such pleasures as horseback riding. Something that she enjoyed doing with Tab Hunter. From a pin-up girl to a studio head, Venetia Stevenson's story was truly incredible.